In this video, you are gonna learn everything you need to know about painting on denim jackets. It's gonna be super easy. I know artists often make it sound like it's gonna be easy and you're sitting there like, I know absolutely nothing about art. How am I supposed to do this? I just want a nice jacket. But truthfully, I don't think this could be any easier. While I may have been painting for many years, this is the first denim jacket I've ever painted. So you're gonna learn along with me. The first thing you need to know about painting on a denim jacket is that the surface of denim is much rougher and coarser and more flexible than most of the things you're probably used to painting on. Because of this, we need to take some precautions to make sure that our paint remains flexible and is not likely to crack. Just to make sure that you're set up properly, get something to press on to make sure that you have a nice even surface to work on. Have that customary sip of that warm beverage that you've been looking forward to and let's get into it. I like to use Angelus acrylic white paint for my base coat. It is a nice flexible paint that is useful in a variety of different surfaces. But in order to make sure that it doesn't crack, it's not okay on its own. I like to add a product called GAC 900. This is a heat setting fabric medium that you can add to your paint at a ratio of 50-50. Because this was my first time painting on denim, I had no idea that it was going to require so many layers to get a solid base coat. I honestly felt like I was painting with invisible ink. I thought I would be so smart as to get the airbrush out, make a stencil and spray on the base coat, but it didn't help at all. Turns out there are no shortcuts to this process, you just have to add quite a few different coats of white paint with your GAC before you're ready to add any colour. And don't forget to heat set in between coats. You can do this by lightly going over the area with a hairbrush until it's touch dry. The next step involves adding a little bit of red paint to your white mixture in order to have a subtle light pink paint. I use this to add an extra layer of opacity but also give me a more defined idea of where each flower was. But I was still losing all the individual flowers amongst the bunches. So I took some white paint and I went around the outside of each flower so I knew where one flower started and the other began. The next step and probably the most satisfying step of this entire process is creating the individual petals for each flower. This kind of looks like a pumpkin from above or a beach ball or pinwheel but basically the idea is to fill in the individual cherry blossom flowers with some white paint. Just make sure to leave those little pink gaps in between your petals. And now at this stage I'm sure you will agree they're starting to look more like flowers than little pink bulbs. Now without making things too dark add a little bit more red to your paint mixture in order to add some depth to the inside of your flower where there's a little bit more shadow. You don't want to use too much red here or you're going to lose the subtlety that makes the cherry blossom look the way it does. Next, you can add tiny little red dots in the center of each flower. Believe it or not, this part of the flower is called the ovary. But we could just call it the middle if you'd prefer. Then you can randomly add a few orange spots dotted around to make up the anther or the pollen section of the flower. Then, with a slightly darker pink, you can connect the center of the flower to those pollen dots. It's also helpful if most of these lines are in generally the same direction. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the creation of brown paint. I've never really been good at it, but a little bit of red, a little bit of orange and some black, and I was able to make a reasonably satisfying dark brown for the branches. And you might ask me, dude, why didn't you underpaint this with a base coat like you did with the flowers? And the truth is, I don't have an answer. I just forgot. And just like with the flowers, you're going to need to add quite a few layers in order to make this fully opaque. It also adds a really nice dimension to the painting if you switch up the thickness of your brushes every now and again to get some thick and thin strokes. Mmm, that's satisfying. And of course, don't forget to heat set your work every now and again. This is important for the durability of your painting, but it also makes sure that you don't accidentally put your wrist in a wet spot of paint. Now because I was doing both front panels of a denim jacket, I needed to do the same design on both sides. So duplicate the process, fast forward to the end result. This is how they came out. And hey, there we go, you're done, you did it. 
If you followed the steps in this video, you should have had no problem painting your own cherry blossom denim jacket. Let me know in the comments down below if it was easier than you expected or harder than you expected. And also let me know if there are any questions you have that I may not have answered. My whole purpose as an artist and here on YouTube is to go through the hard things and learn the struggles so that you don't have to. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful. As you may have known, if you checked out my channel before, I do a lot of sneaker customization and leather painting videos. If you're interested in that, please head over to my channel and check it out. Consider subscribing. But as you can see, that's not all that I do. So if you like art in general, and if you want to learn more about the nitty gritty about why certain things are good and why certain things are better, please consider subscribing to the channel and joining me on this awesome journey of art discovery.